I felt I felt dangerous, y'all. I mean, just like <laughs> you better not cross me. Hi, I'm Ma I'm Jonathan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Molly, and welcome to her channel. Yeah, their channel, our channel. But I, I probably have already posted this video, but if I haven't already, um, I am COVID positive. So mom and I have to isolate from each other. We he can't get away from me, and yeah. uh, it is what it is. His rapid test came back negative, but we're waiting on his send away test. So he's taking very good care of me. He doesn't have any symptoms. Neither does Hattie. Um, but mom and I can't film right now, so he's my filming buddy for today. Hello. This is my husband, Jonathan. Hi. We've been married for how long? 13? 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. Um, and then we have our adopted daughter, Hattie, which is what we're going to be talking today about is our adoption. Because today we're not going to... We're not going to go into anything that we think might be personal for Hattie. Uh, that's her story to tell as she sees fits. As she as she gets older, um, then that's really for her to kind of decide how much she wants to share about. Uh, this is mainly our journey of getting to Hattie. Yeah. Because there are things in here that are so good. They just remind us of just some really awesome things that, that brought us to our little girl. Yeah. So. I feel like our adoption story is really about faith in the Lord and and patience and his provision his provision oh my goodness in, uh, we in could numerous ways yeah we could talk for hours and hours about uh god's provision in all this do have um our, our list somewhat of a list yeah so. so question number one uh why adoption for us um molly i'll let you start so some of you guys already know, if you followed any of our other videos, that my mom and late father uh, fostered. Before I was even born, they started fostering. And when I was, oh, I don't even know how old I was, honestly, when we adopted my little brother, Sam, who has been on our channel as a special guest. <laughs> and uh, my little sister, Daisy, was adopted when I was, I think, 15. I think that's right. I think, 14 or 15. I think I was... 15, 14 or 15 when I got to go to China and be a part of that whole experience of bringing Daisy home. So fostering adoption was normal. I grew up with it. I was 15 years old. Yeah. When we retired and we retired right after we adopted Daisy. How many, how many kids did y'all have come through? It was like house? over 65 yeah. kids that came through our home. Um, and so it was very normal for me and not weird, had no stigma, anything. It was not strange at all. So for me, it was just a very natural thing, and Sam and Daisy, uh, I can't imagine my family without them, and I love them, and those two guys, I mean, like I say, those two guys, those two kids, um, that's my brother and my sister, like, would die for them, love them, and proud of them, even though Daisy doesn't want to be on our channel, you know, whatever, but... She will one day. Those, yeah, those two humans are my family, through and through, and... Uh, my brother and my sister. Anyway, so yeah, this is very natural. And I grew up uh, just a little bit of our backstory. I've known Molly a long, long time. Me and her older brothers were friends kind of in our youth group growing up days. And her oldest brother, Hunter, um, we used to share a Sunday school class together a long, long time ago. Steve Clausen was our, our teacher. And I just remember Hunter giving us updates when it was uh, y'all going through the process of adopting Sam and uh, just remember hearing about that and we would pray for y'all every week and um, yeah it was it was it was neat hearing that it, that was a, that was a big to do uh, I remember it being um, quite the roller coaster ride yeah with, it was with, with Sam Sam with so Sam, yeah just it was a big part of of her life so in turn as the boyfriend and then the fiance and then the the husband it was a big part of my life so uh, one thing we talked about early on was mm. having kids versus adopting, and um, I saw what a blessing adoption had been to her family. And um, you know, I I don't think there's anybody in my family that has done adoption before um, to speak of. Yeah, but when we were dating, we definitely talked about. Oh, I asked talked where about you it, were yeah. at, and yeah. you're like, "Yeah, I don't. I'm totally up for adopting." Yeah. Yeah, and so it was kind of one of those things um, where we were kind of on the same page um, right away. We were trusting that 
that um, God would work out all those details, and He did. We adopted, um, or we, I've never been the kind of person ever, and I think that this has a lot to do with my raising. I don't know. It's not To me, it's not a negative thing, but growing up around so many kids, then when I got married, I was like, Jonathan, I want like five years without children. That was my goal because I had been around kids all of my life, and uh, people expected that since I was around kids and fostering, and though I loved the way I was raised and that my family did that, um, and, and it was a family thing. It wasn't that my parents fostered kids. It was it was a family. Um, that it's what we did. We all helped each other out and and looked after each other and took care of each other. So I wanted five years without children, and people expected that I would love to like babysit and stuff because of kids. And no, I that's just not in me. It's not in me. Yeah. So I wanted <laughs> I wanted a long time. It's not in her. <laughs> it's not in me. Like people, you know, I don't help out and volunteer in our children's ministry at church, but I'm up for doing other things. So it's just the, I don't know what it is. It's just not in me, uh, y'all. So anyway. you got you got a lifetime of that. I did before you were 16 years old. I, so. Yes, before I was 16 years old, I got a lot a lot of that. And now when I was younger, the foster kids were older, and you know my my parents were good about making sure they didn't have like just a constant you know, same age in the house. But that's probably a whole nother YouTube video about the fostering world. Um, so Jonathan was good with that. He was good with us just having um, those five years. We overshot it a little bit. Yeah, our goal was like, <laughs> okay, let's wait five years before we have kids. And then it, it really, when we started talking about adoption, when we were dating and then we got married and we thought, okay, this is what, uh, this is what we're going to do. Um, and so um in, within that five years we started trying to figure out okay what's our adoption look like uh, from where domestic international um, that kind of thing and so uh, we overshot our our five years by another five years and, and that was fine with us but, it gave us time to um but there was a very specific reason was. for that we're going to get to that in just a minute so um, i i've never been one of those people who felt like i needed to birth a kid like that's not in me that's not an innate feature that God yeah. has given me is that I have to have a kid come out of my hoo-ha. <laughs> but I just, yeah. it's just not something that I've ever really felt strongly about. And we don't have reproductive issues, I guess. I, not that yeah. we're aware of. Yeah. As far as so, we know, we are able to birth kids and yeah. have kids. It's just God led us in a different direction as far as our family yeah. goes. And so we were we yeah. knew that we, we were totally open and that we wanted to grow our family through adoption. And there are so many times that I had seen that adoption was plan B, that it became a natural yeah. plan A for us. It was plan A for us all along. So, all, and so yeah. after, you know, when we started talking about this, the more about birthing kids really just got pushed to the background and the more adoption became, no, that's, that's our number one choice. Why China? Why China? That's a that's a big question. Yeah, and not domestic because yeah. that can be kind of controversial. Yeah, it can be. And I saw a documentary one time. I think you you've probably seen it too. Um, and it's a family that happened to go through the same agency as us, CCAI, which is amazing, by the way. Huge shout out to CCAI. Yeah, they were awesome for us. Um, they were awesome for us. Um, but they they had been there probably five or six times through the same agency. Um, and he gave probably the most poignant answer I've ever heard for why China. And he said, well, that because that's where my kids were. And... Um, Looking back on it, of course, you, you don't know that going into it. I mean, you, you know that God's going to provide. You know that God has all this worked out. But looking back on it, I can honestly say, because that's where our daughter was. So that's the short answer to that, is that's, that's where our daughter was. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why I leaned more towards China versus domestic. Um, Molly, and, Molly had been to China, of course, uh, when they went um, uh, for Daisy. Because I had gone back... In 2000 when we adopted Daisy and that's really where I felt like the seed had been planted for me um, for adoption from China and then I got to go back in 2013 yeah. with you yeah that all worked out where you got to go as well and that was really big for us to be able to do that together and then we went back and what when did we it was 2018, 2018. I would say yeah. 2016 but that's when yeah. Hattie was born yeah. 2018 um, 
And I, there's just a special place in my heart for China. Yeah. And I could see us, I would love to go back. And Hattie seems interested in going back. Yeah. And I want her to see her country. I don't imagine we're done going to China. I, yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Maybe not for adoption, but definitely not. And not anytime yeah. soon because I know things are shut down with coronavirus. Yeah. But I would like to take yeah. her back and to, yeah, to keep that culture part. Alive, Absolutely. But. So China, with with us deciding, okay, China, uh, there were some special challenges. Um, China, you've basically got one option as far as adoption goes, and that's off the special needs. Um, oh, and you have to be, both people have to be 30 have years old. Have to be 30. So that added some time to that us. That did add yeah. some time. So uh, Molly had to, that's part of the reason it was 10 years instead of our five-year well, plan. I am 35 now. Yeah. And we adopted her when I was, what, 33, 32? 33, but we started when you were 31. Okay. Yeah. So Something like that. It's a long process. Yes. <laughs> very long, very long process, as many people uh, are finding out. And, and speaking of coronavirus and all that, I, I, my heart just breaks for people who were matched and even maybe had a travel date who had to push pause. Oh yeah. Um, on on travel, I was oh. talking to some people uh, the other day who were adopting um, internationally, not from China, but from another country. Um, and that's what they had to do. They had to push pause because of everything going on. And um, things are looking in the right direction. They're going to be hopefully uh, back on track soon. But man, how? Uh, yeah, hard to imagine yeah. because mm. we had to wait on something when our agency yeah. had a the government or whatever they had to yeah. step in just double check make sure things were going right and uh and so it paused our process for a couple of weeks something yeah. like that and yeah. that was hard enough yeah so a few weeks uh, there were several times and we're going to talk more about that in a minute too about about how everything the is timing. even the timing was mm -hmm. just impeccable um but yeah it was it's it's hard to wait when you're when you get going and it really is because you just you get excited and you you think okay there's something i can do to rush this but there's really not yeah um you, you're you're dependent on other people and hopefully you're dependent fully on god to say hey i got, I got this yeah this is this is all me so just just hold your horses so yeah um so the special needs list um you can adopt healthy I, there's a lot of agencies who aren't even taking yeah, people they're not taking for that people. So program. you wait years and years, years. and years. We're talking uh, 10 years or yeah, more. Yeah, 10 years or more for a healthy child. And um, I, I say that loosely because, I mean, the, some of the special needs are so minor. And it's just, it's, it's incredible to think, even uh, with our story and with people that we know, it's incredible to think, okay, these kids are special needs. Okay. So, um and there are some major special needs. There are. There and are. it's challenging because you have a list in front of you to choose from what oh, you're comfortable was, with. That was a hard, hard so piece of the paperwork hard. to fill out. And that's part of the, the um, application process mm -hmm. is filling out your medical checklist, your MCC. Um, and, and you can change it. You can. Um, as you become more knowledgeable about what certain... Um, things might require of you, what those needs look like. Um, and I was telling Jonathan earlier, because we were trying to talk through some of this so that we weren't just jumping around too much or um, saying, oh, no, that wasn't right. Remember this or whatever. But I just, I didn't want to be, it's, it's a very delicate thing because we are two people who believe in Jesus, who love mm -hmm. the Lord. And I believe that with God, all things are possible. And that includes his power through me for whatever circumstances that I'm in. That when I am weak, he is strong. I did not want to be prideful in thinking, oh, I can handle anything. I really yeah. wanted it to be led by the Lord and what he knew that he created us for, what we are capable of. And uh, the really hard times of saying, no, I don't think I am capable. And it might just be my location that I'm not close to a specialist um, for that need, whatever it may look like, but to say no to what essentially is a child on a page. Anyway, yeah. that is so difficult, and uh, that is difficult. So difficult. Yeah. Anyway, I, so, so difficult. our medical checklist was long, and uh, we we had a lot of things that, that we had checked off. Hey, we think we can do. We think we can handle this. It. I look at it like this: when you're filling out that medical checklist. You don't know with your birth kids um, what you're going to get, so no. you, you're fully relying on the Lord there. So it's kind of like, well, 
You're fully relying on the Lord here too. I mean, you but know? I do think that people should be realistic because yeah. I was mentioning to him there has been if you look this up the world of adoption and special needs specifically you'll come across probably Micah Stauffer and mm. that's been a big huge controversy um, and my heart really goes out to them and I, I just I see so many different perspectives because of it um, in our process and just being completely realistic with what we can handle yeah. um, because I, I don't yeah anyway that's that's not we're not a drama channel no. so I'm not gonna go yeah. into all of that but but that is something worth noting is that it's okay to say no I don't think I'm gonna be the best fit whether it's because of this reason or that reason and it's uh, it's better to not check a box on a piece of paper uh, in my opinion than to um, to, than to have a file in front of you and have to say no because that is gut-wrenching to have the file of yeah. a child who needs a home in front of you and, and say that's too much for me to handle so don't check a box you know or or even worse have a, a disrupted adoption um, yeah that's sad I know yeah that's I think sad. that that's probably out of my wheelhouse to really talk too much about yeah it, yeah that would take some anyway yeah really really difficult so we had to wait till Molly was 30 though yeah. they added another five years um, the next kind of hurdle we faced in this that we filled out our application and um, I don't remember yeah I don't remember the numbers yeah which the is numbers, one reason we're filming because yeah. I don't want to forget everything yeah so the expense of it um, you know you, you've got expenses kind of no matter which way you adopt domestically or well if um, you adopt through foster through care foster care it's it's way way down and I get yeah. that and and if anyone wants to ask us our I know that some people can be judgmental about it and I told him that the snarky side of me wants to kind of rise up and, and be like when people say oh you're not adopting domestically like it's an automatic and I just want to be like oh who did you adopt because most times <laughs> Most times, not all the time, but most times, those people with that, that judgment and, uh, anyway, are people who actually have not ever adopted or supported adoption in any kind of form or fashion. And to, to us, yeah. an adopted child and a, a child having a home, yeah. a hopefully a good home, if, if the home study and all that is done, hopefully a good home. Oh, the home study. Yeah, hopefully all of that, yeah. then I don't... Thank you for giving a child a home or yeah. for supporting someone to give a child a home. And to me, I don't care what color, where they're from, anything, what language they speak, anything like that. Thank you for um, sheltering, giving love to a child, love more than anything, but giving a child a warm place to sleep at night. On. Anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah. I, I can just get off on that because it's so discouraging sometimes. We, we didn't get many comments, but there were a few. And they're not by people who have adopted. And yeah. so you're like, what? Okay, well, thank you for your yeah. input. So That goes back to that question, why China? Well, that's where our daughter was. Yeah, that's where our daughter was. Yeah. Looking back, yeah. that is very plain to see. That's where our daughter was. Yeah. So, um, it was expensive. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it was expensive. Um, and we know birthing a child in a hospital uh, comes with a hospital bill. Yeah. So I know that that can also be controversial. Kids People who cheap. fundraise. <laughs> Kids ain't cheap, so. And and uh, I get that. You're like, well, no one's helping me pay for my hospital bill. Yeah. Why should we help you get a kid home? You know, and I get that. And that's, you, yeah. you know, you can have your opinion for sure on that. Um, it is expensive and thankfully we had just, we build homes on the side. It's not something we really promote. Yeah. Um, we don't, you know, really, we don't really publicize, like nope. we don't put any, anything out there like, yeah. Hey, we want to build your home. Nope. But we had just gotten done building for a really sweet couple who we really didn't want to build for. <laughs> We really we prayed. Sorry, <laughs> we, really we, we love you guys, but we, we didn't like, want to do it. Do we it. want to? Because we had just got anyway. It doesn't yeah, matter. Doesn't matter. But but God, it's a big process. We feel like God orchestrated that for a very specific reason, and that um, was to start to start our adoption process. It yeah, yeah. really helped pay for our first fees that were due yeah. for for filing and paperwork and agency fees, things like that. Um, that really helped because it, it we he I asked him he said it was like over forty thousand dollars. Yeah, it was between forty two and forty five thousand for like two hundred and 
turnkey, you know, everything. You like know, so, everything, like yeah. all the, it's, it may not be, that wasn't all agency fees, but when you're talking about how you have to have your paperwork, oh, what was it oh, like certified, certified and, with the secretary of state and, and then, all this and, and, um, Oh, there's, there's another word. Anyways. I know. So many things that you had to get it. Our paperwork. I will show you the stack of paperwork oh, sometime. No. We kept a fraction of it, and it's still this tall. It's I mean, so, yeah. so much paperwork. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, those things, they cost money. Sometimes it's as little as $5. Sometimes it's as much as a few hundred. Yeah. Um, but that stuff adds up so quickly. Yeah. And, and, and if you do it once, you have to do it three times. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. So, even yeah. the little $5 charges, there were two or three hundred of those. I mean, it's kind yeah. of crazy. And we try to do so much of that um, by cash flowing with yeah. our budget. Um, and then thankfully we had, you know, built that home. So we had some money set aside to help us along. Yeah. But we did need to figure Fun out yeah. how we were going to pay for it. Yeah. And boy, the Lord showed up big time there too. I mean, it was kind of like, yeah. are you kidding me? Um, so I am a funeral director and in Bomber by trade, uh, I work uh, here for a local family owned funeral home, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time we had um, a gentleman who just worked at night and he had some injuries. <laughs> so we need to, yeah, he had some injuries. Why are you laughing about it? I don't know. Anyway, I don't <laughs> know why I'm work. laughing about that. Uh, well, it kind of kind of paid off for me. So <laughs> and um, he's doing much better now. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, he um, um, he got injured, and we needed someone to fill in for him. And so I'll do it. Yeah, keep hitting the it. table with my ring. Sorry about that. Yep. Um, so I filled in for him. I took every call night I could. Um, I told Molly. Uh, you know, I can sleep when we get back from China, which was a lie. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> yeah, but anyways. Totally uh, yeah. a lie. I didn't think about that. Yeah. You thought. I thought <laughs> I would sleep when we got back from China. That was not true uh, for several reasons. But uh, we and did fundraising like crazy. All the time. But I, we did fundraise, but we were so willing to sacrifice oh. and do what we needed to do. It wasn't that we were like, we had any expectations for yeah. anyone to give. No. Um, no, we so didn't. So he started working day and night, literally yeah. day and night, and that helped us tremendously. Um, I let people know that we had started our process, and like the first Sunday at church, someone handed me a check, and it was just yeah. so precious. Um, and so there were moments like that, but he worked day and night and we tried to figure out on our budget what else could we cut what else could we cut and we've always I mean we love Dave Ramsey and so we've always tried to live within our means but then you're like well can we like the one thing that I never cut because you wouldn't let me is my um, Ipsy because it's like it's ten dollars and I need you know just to have something a distraction <laughs> just something, something to look forward to yeah, yeah. to feel like anyway um, so what was the other thing? I worked I worked on call for for my funeral home. My brother yeah. has a mortuary service, and I worked on call for him when mm -hmm. I could. Um, I mean, I was on call probably at least five nights a week for a year straight. Um, yeah, because he came back. Yeah. The dude came back, and then he got injured again. Yeah, he came back, and I was like, oh. But he got injured again. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. So anyways, um, no longer works. Though. Yeah. Yeah. And then started our fundraising. Speaking of fundraising, yeah. uh, we were wearing matching t-shirts. These are, we actually um, wore these in China. We've yeah, had these we for wore a while. These in China. We've, we've, we've had them for a while. This is actually a couple who, another couple who we had built a house for. They are currently adopting. Um, and they have had quite the hiccup. Yeah. Yeah. So they're adopting from Haiti. From um, Haiti. Mm -hmm. They have three Three kids. Three biological children. Yeah, precious kids. And um, anyways, maybe we'll link to their yeah, adoption story. Yeah, I'll try to, I know she has an Etsy in. shop and she's done a couple of things through Bonfire, but their agency, that's a whole story that they had to like switch agencies because yeah. one, but they think they're on the right track, but they have to update their home study. It just, it is a process. And when you see sometimes these kids who come from such terrible, like, you know, People get to just birth kids, and it, no one comes to do home studies. It's yeah. like if you get pregnant, no one's coming to do a home study. <laughs> There's no home study. And you don't have to update it, and you don't have to do any of that stuff. They're yeah. just like, oh, they're pregnant, they have a kid. But 
those of us who've adopted, I know that there are stories out yeah. there, and I hate that. But seriously, we have done so much paperwork. Yeah. Our home study was <laughs> like so much, so much, y'all. It was a lot. It was it, it was it's invasive. A lot. It's expensive it's and expensive. it's a lot. Yeah. And well, they ask you some questions. They don't do. They? So there is nothing off limits in the home. So we feel for these. We feel for yes. them, and we're rooting We've them. We've got. Well, you've yeah. seen Molly wear ours before. That's one thing we did. We had t-shirts through at the tail end. Uh, we did t-shirts. Yeah, we did t-shirts at the tail end. Some of the other fundraisers we did was we had a, and we're going to try to find a video of it. We had a epic. I don't, I don't even think you could call it a garage sale. It was something else. It was something else. It was right here at this house. It was her grandmother's house at the time. And it started in the backyard and it went up the driveway. And the driveway here is huge. Um, it's It went around. We had a circus tent set up in the front yard. We did. It, like literally like a huge tent. Yeah. Uh, the biggest tent we could rent is set up in the front yard. It was the garage sale to end all garage sales. And I know I've got a great video of it somewhere. We're going to try to link it. Yeah. Into, or we like try to put it in here so you yeah. can see it. Um, but we had a, we had a garage sale. We, we collected stuff. We lived on top of this stuff for months and mm -hmm. months because we put it out. Hey, we're going to have a garage sale. Uh, anything you want to donate, we'd love we'll to. Come we'll come pick and it pick it up. up. We'll get rid of your junk for you. Um, and Boy, people responded. Yes, they I mean, did. There was the one couple. He was the professor at Letourneau. Um, they I were mean, moving, and we cleaned out. Like They took what they wanted from their house, and they could have had an estate sale, but they said, hey, come pick up the rest of the stuff. And oh, my gosh, it was like a trailer and a half load. It was um, huge, y'all. But we, we lived on top of this stuff for months and months and months getting ready. And who has a garage sale and, and, and raises $10,000? But yeah, we did. I mean, it was crazy. And that was not like that we had was, a donation jar. Up we front. did. We had a donation jar. We had it marked. Hey, this is for an adoption fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, but less than forty dollars was strictly donations. This was all the sale of goods. All the sale of like, yeah. and no huge. Like we had a, oh, a yeah. couple, like like two or three like big I kind of items. I remember the the quilting rack. The that quilting was, rack. Yeah. That was a big one. Thank you, Miss Bozeman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your but quilts are beautiful. Everything else, y'all, was just small yeah. stuff. Yeah. Little. That uh, a few added big up. things, but nothing. Um, and your mom, she made it the even ten. Like once yeah. we got our final we made number like, in, like nine, nine thousand. Eight hundred and fifty something dollars, and mom, and mom was like, "Oh, you can't get that close to ten thousand. So she gave us like a oh, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty bucks, and it was a, it was ten thousand. So much work, y'all. Yeah. And mom's estate sale buddies, they came. Um, her her worker bees, they came that and was helped their us. Very first charity sale. Very first charity yeah. sale, and we could not have done it without them. They mm -hmm. learned a lot though. Yeah. <laughs> they, they did. For future charity sales, they're like, well, yeah. now we know how we need to work on this but so we had our t-shirts towards the end another thing that we did was um i make the world's best chicken and dumplings um and so it's true i never yeah. liked chicken and dumplings until he made his yeah it's my grandmother's recipe mm -hmm. and my dad taught me how to do it um, oh and then let me get the bowls yeah get the bowl holders so molly's grandmother who hattie is named for um hattie helen hattie is my helen grandmother. is her grandmother and we have hattie joe Yep. Um, she made these bowl holders. And I'm going to insert a picture of my grandmother making these and uh, the fabric store, I think, gave her a shout out for it. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll post that as well. These are kind of gross because we, we use them. Oh, and I need to wash those. So I'm going to show you these ones. Yeah. But They're so cute. So what we did was I spent um, a weekend kind of making. You put your little bowl. Right a tremendous amount of chicken and dumplings. We went through, I don't know, probably 30 chickens. I don't, I don't know. Chickens. It was so, so much chicken and dumplings. Yeah. And people were all about it. Yeah. And so, and it was chicken and dumplings about, uh, I don't know, enough to feed eight people. I don't know, yeah, it was a It was a big container. A big container. Uh, a couple of few quarts, maybe. I don't even and know. You got and then two, a, bowl holders. two bowl holders. Uh, for thirty dollars, if I remember right, probably. Yeah, and so we spent a weekend doing that. I mean, was it just one or was it two? It's two bowl holders. If I remember no, right. is it one weekend or two weekends that we did this? I think I did it over a four-day weekend. It was it was a lot. I know our house looked like we manufactured 
so drugs. Many, yeah, flour I mean, it, was, there was everywhere. It we like, were very clean. Yeah, but you can only do so much to contain the flour oh, when yeah. you're rolling I'm up the dumplings. Flour floating up on the shelves. I oh, mean, it was, it was everywhere. Yeah, it looked like some kind of coke house or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it was. So we, we don't have that. any drugs in our house. Yeah. Don't call CPS. Yeah, uh, we did that. We did. We did our T-shirts. We did um, all sorts of things. I mean. Yeah, and we then, tried to make sure that the only fundraiser where we didn't have to do really hardly anything was the t-shirts. Yeah. And I was so thankful because we did it at the tail end when we knew we were headed to China just to help, you know, I always kind of laugh and say, oh, that's going to help us be able to eat while we're there. Like yeah. we had everything, yeah. but that helped us to, to have that extra money to actually eat and, and you know, take care of those little things while we were there. But everything we did, we tried to make it where we were sacrificing our time knowing that people buying the chicken and dumplings, they got something out of it that we weren't just expecting people to give us money. Mm -hmm. um, though some people did that and did and were very generous. Yeah. Um, very generous. Very generous. Yeah. And, and it's, that was the kind of thing where, where God put that on their heart. And um, so fundraising, although we raised through all our fundraising together, probably 15,000. I mean, the garage sale was the lion's share of that. It was, it was I, huge. Yeah, um, but it's still it's still we had a, a, a pretty big mountain in front of us uh, when it came to the finances. Um, so the thing that it made the finances is what made me more anxious than anything. Yeah, I remember you remember we, we were having a budget meeting about the adoption one time, and we were just sitting there going over the yeah at our, at our so bar. Far. What do we had paid and how much we had left to pay, yeah. and and uh, it was discouraging. It really was because you're like oh. I mean, you, you kind of, you see this in front of you and you forget what's behind you. You forget that you've got um, the creator of the heavens and earth behind you on your team. And, and we so, were willing to take out a loan oh, yeah, if yeah. we needed to. If we needed to. We were like, that's our last case. That's our worst case scenario. And, yeah. and we'll do that. We'll do that um, if necessary. But we, we really didn't want, didn't want to. to. We, were, we were in the middle of becoming debt free. And so, and it was kind of, kind of one of those things. So yeah. we were willing to do it and we would have done it in a heartbeat. Um, but man, we didn't have to. We had, uh, in fact, after after that particular budget meeting, Molly reminded me of this the other day. We we had mail. Molly had a stack of mail sitting right next to her, and we had this this budget meeting, and it was kind of I would call it discouraging. Well, he honestly, if he was ever discouraged, I didn't know because most times he's like, "It's all going to work out. It's yeah. all going to work out. It's all going to work out." I had to, I had it, yeah, I had to be positive. About yeah, it, so. but he was, and so. But I'm just like, okay, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> this is what it's looking like right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really hoping, you know, and uh, yeah. So then he was going through the mail after we were kind of done talking about it. And then he opened up a little, little card, little card, sweet from card from a family member. Yeah. From a family member with a check in it. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So we're talking about how are we going to do this? Where are we going to, where's the money going to come from this and that and sitting right next to us in a, in a pile of mail is a check for a thousand dollars. Um, anyway, it was, You're it was like, a, what? a subtle reminder of God yeah. will provide that God will provide and that he'll yeah. use his people. That's right. To provide. That's right. And, uh, yeah. And then I, like I had, um, a friend in our class who made necklaces and gave me the money from when she sold necklaces. That's right. Uh, so sweet. Um, we had another family member, well, gave you above and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I did some work for, uh, for another family member and they were like, how much do I, oh yeah, I told him. And he said, well, how much, how much do you need? And I said, well, this is what we're looking this like. Is, yeah. And so just handed me an envelope. And that was right at the end. Right at the that end. That was right and before it, we left. Again, and it, helped us eat. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> helped us tip drivers and yeah. had a tip. Things like that. Um, yeah. Above and beyond. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've asked your boss. Yeah. So, we don't have to go into specifics because yeah, we, we don't want to go embarrass. Into details. We don't want to embarrass people or, or anything. You know, but share what they, but what they want to keep to themselves. Our needs but. were met and, and, and God used his people to provide for us in extraordinary ways. Um, one way, I, I remember calling Molly after somebody had done something so nice and so generous for me. And I was, I was 
I couldn't even talk. I was crying on the phone. Yeah, and he does not cry y'all. Yeah. So I was like, are you okay? What is wrong? Yeah, she thought she thought what somebody's dead, wrong? something's wrong. Like, and Jonathan. Yeah. And, what happened? And I'll I'll give i I'll give I'll give the story without the details. How about that? Oh, you can try. Yeah, so Molly and I had talked when we first got accepted and I said, Wouldn't it be cool if blah blah blah? If something if, like this if happened. If something like this and happened. And it was like and a it was crazy. A crazy thing. And it was a crazy number. And it was, well, it happened. And it happened. To the dot. To the dot. To the penny. It happened. And then there was even more above that. More above that. Yeah. And so. But like was, it happened to the dot. And then it's like something else got thrown in top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On top. And you're just like. And and I never we never talked about that with anybody. No one, only Jesus. <laughs> only only her, me, and God knew about that conversation. Was that is wouldn't it, it be cool if this happened? And it happened. After that, he was like, I feel like I could ask God for anything yeah, right I now, and I'd dangerous. get what I want. I felt dangerous. <laughs> I thought, man, people better watch out. God's on my side. I could ask him for whatever I wanted. <laughs> And so I remember feeling that well, and yeah. I still feel that because I mean, it, but it's confirmation when yeah. you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're taking the steps that you're supposed to be taking. That's right. It really, it, there were, there were so many times where it, it, timing was one. Oh my goodness. The timing of the thing we, we kept wanting to get in a hurry and, and, but our prayer all along was God, we want Daisy to go with us. We want this to be able to happen. Yeah, we had and, very specific things we were praying for. And Daisy yeah. was one of those because she wanted to go. And uh, for her to go on a trip like that with us and with my mom just seemed really special. Yeah. Um, I knew that I would, wanted my mom there because I've never been a mom before. And it really, I mean, that's a whole other journey in itself. And so Daisy had a like two and a half week window yeah she had a very very so she's uh she's at a and m she was at blinn at the time uh, yeah. but she had a very short window where she could go yeah summer and school summer school yeah and so uh, when we first thought we were gonna get to go um uh, anyways the timing was incredible we got so frustrated and so caught up in why isn't this happening the way we want it to we 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 got approved we got this and then there was a shutdown uh, with our agency. We got this and then oh well, they're they're shut down because of an outbreak of uh, chickenpox. Well, um, we had a, a very important piece of paper yeah, coming to the mail. An I eight hundred A. If if you're doing oh adoption, gosh. you know about the I eight hundred A. This thing came in the mail and we thought, okay, this is a, a preliminary piece of paper saying, hey, you've been approved. You're going to get your official I 800A. I mean, it was janky, y'all. It was so janky. The printer the that printer, it was printed on, it was like all crooked It was it. crooked. It was ha halfway out of ink. Yes. It was wrinkled. It was the it crappiest was so, looking piece of paper you've ever seen. I was like, seen. this is not the piece of paper yeah. we paid. How much was it? Like $1,500? It was yeah. like an insane yeah. amount. Yeah, almost like, $2,000 probably for this one this piece of paper. This is not how much. This isn't it. This isn't no. it. This is... This is the piece of paper saying your your beautiful frameable <laughs> That's what it felt like a piece of paper is coming but so we sat on it for a month a month thinking when is our 800 a going to get here when is it going to get here we can't we can't go forward without it we're calling they're like well it should have been there by now they've already sent it um and I mean, then we then we figured out surely that's yeah, not it and so sorry. all these things that were holding us up they and you feel so us. stupid yeah you feel stupid uh, and at that point in time we don't say stupid at that point in time though did we know that hattie was ours i don't remember i don't know because i know it's different when you're like when you have a face that yeah. you're headed for but ours we we weren't sure yet if yeah. hattie was ours. i don't think that we were sure yet and maybe we were I don't know, y'all. I don't remember yeah. that part. But but you do. You kind of feel like I felt like I let Jonathan down because I yeah. didn't notice that that crooked printed half ink piece yeah. of paper was that thousand dollar, fifteen hundred dollar piece of paper that yeah. we were waiting on. And so there were all these things slowing us down, but they weren't slowing us down at all. It was all in the Lord's timing because yeah. lo and behold, at the end, it fell perfectly. Daisy had one day before. And you don't get to pick when you go. You, They tell you, buy your tickets for this day. Basically. Yeah, well, they gave us um, two options. Yeah. So they, they said you could go this date, or it was like a week or two later, or this date. And 
we couldn't go the week before because of something. Because of visas. Visas, that's right. That's a Visa, whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. It, oh my goodness, there the were visas. Some, our agency was great, yeah. but there were a couple of areas where I wish that things were a little bit more clear in how to go about, about filling out the visas because it's very tricky when you're not sure ex your exact dates yet but you need to have this part done yeah so when you get your dates you're ready to go it was yeah. just when you get to that tell in it is just like you have to have a travel date before you get a visa but you have to have your visa before though you can get your travel date like that's how it worked it was with this. Just, it was strange anyway and so my mom and sister didn't have their visas yeah was, so we couldn't go before i have a picture i need to insert of yes. daisy having to get her um, a visa, a passport photo for, for her, her visa. She accidentally pepper sprayed herself on the way out the door to get the passport photo. <laughs> and we photo. drove so late one yeah, night. Yeah, we to left meet at her. like ten o'clock at night to meet oh, her. Oh my goodness! There's just so many great stories yeah. with how it all ended yeah. up working out. And it's funny for us because we didn't pepper spray ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did. But she did do that. Yeah. Um, but I say that to say this, all these things that slowed us down allowed Daisy one day before the trip and one day after the trip. It fell perfectly. It fell right where we prayed to the Lord that it would fall. And Hattie, that being said, Hattie had chicken pox. Hattie had chicken pox. Right before we went. So she, even if we went that week or two early that we could have done yeah. it, um, we would have had to wait. Yeah, there until... were there were families there that had gone that previous week that had to stay there in quarantine because they went that week, and so and, and this, these were from the same orphanage, the same um, the same agency, and so anyway, yeah. it's like. Man, so they said Hattie every, had it. Hattie had. I remember she had a few. Hattie had it. They yeah. called me. You're like, well, Hattie has chicken pox. Chicken pox. And so it ended up working out where she was over the chicken pox and over being quarantined yeah. for that. So yeah. that it wasn't like a huge spread among all the kids. We didn't get to go to her orphanage because, because of the of outbreak the chicken of chicken pox. pox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. We it had was everything. 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 The timing was I mean, everything. Like I say, I, I felt, I felt dangerous, y'all. I mean, just like. You better not cross me. I'll pray to the Lord. Yeah, you know Lord. what I mean? So it was, yeah, anything we asked for, God was Another thing, providing over and above. Just, um, man. Another thing that I want to talk about, and because uh, I don't want this to go on too long. Because yeah. we're already sitting at like, like 40, a, 45 minutes or something. Yeah, we could probably, like I said, we could talk about this for hours. Yeah. Hours. So the way that we went about this, there's a couple of different ways. Some people... They search for their kid, and when they find their kid, they're like, "Oh, I'm going to start the process. That's my kid," and, yeah. that, and then they start it. Yeah. And I knew that we didn't want to do that. Um, that we wanted to sign up with an agency and have like, I knew from my experience of seeing Daisy, um, and her adoption is that they assigned Daisy to my family. They're like, "Hey, this is your kid." And they sent us her referral picture. I knew that I was up for our agencies saying, "Hey." Here's a child who's been referred to you based on, you know, where you're at in line, waiting for a child, and your checklist. Yeah. Um, he would get yeah. on their website. So they had a, yeah, on their website, they mm -hmm. had a list all the time. Waiting still children do. list. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's called the special focus list. And these are kids that they can't match. Um, kids that for some reason or another are, are unmatched and they're either fixing to lose the file because these files... Uh, with China, they go from agency to agency. Mm -hmm. This agency will have this file for a little bit, and then it'll go to this agency. It'll go to Madison. It'll go to Ring. It'll go to all, all these different ones. And so you can see the same kid if you're on several of these groups, probably at one time or another being with each agency. And so the special focus list is what it was called with CCAI. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that thing religiously oh my goodness i i literally i'm not exaggerating refresh. i checked that list refresh if refresh. i did it if i did it five times a day it was probably more like 20 times a day just seeing are there any new faces on that mm -hmm. list and so i never did she never did i never did she never did and i did and i would send her one from time to time and be like oh just and there were it. he sent me a couple and there yeah. were files that we did get yeah and the pain oh. of saying no is the most heartbreaking that is gut wrenching that is gutting to have a file of a precious child and say mm -mm, you're yeah can't do it. oh um, man and so but the best thing is that like the kids files that we had 
seeing them go on the hey we're yeah. matched part of the at page. At the bottom of that special focus list it says my family found me and matched. And and, and then you're like, okay, God. That wasn't our kid. God that is was, orchestrating that, was that family's kid, and so yeah. So I checked it all oh, the time. So challenging, though. Yeah, I checked it all the time. Mom I never, never did. Checked it. Yeah. So one day in particular, I checked it. I don't know why, and I got on there, and I had checked it a couple of times that day, and for some reason, I was just staying on that website, and I'd work, and then I'd go back to that page and refresh it. And I check it, and at the tail end, almost at the tail end of the day, um, Hattie's face popped up, mm -hmm. and you... I had just checked it, and it wasn't there, because... Yeah. Yeah, anyways, I had just checked it, it wasn't there. I had gone to get a haircut, and from my office to where I go get a haircut is about a four and a half, five minute drive. And so, I checked it, nothing new. I leave to go get a haircut. By the time I get to the to the barber shop where I get my haircut, Molly's calling me. Have you seen Ping? Yeah. What? Ping. Ping, said, Ping. Have you seen Have you seen Ping Ping on the list? I said no. She sent me a screenshot. I said request her file. And so I did, y'all. And it was already taken. It was already taken by another family. By another family. So I was like, quick, how did that happen so fast? Yeah. So from. Me checking it, her not being there, going to a five minute drive to get my hair cut, Molly finding the file, me saying request. I mean, this is within a three minute period. It, her file was already taken. And I told Molly, we'll forget it. We'll never see her file. Yeah, and I was uh, riding with a friend to go run some errands for work. And I'm like, we're not going to get her file. We're not going to get her file. That was Spark Weekend. And it was Spark Weekend. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole nother. So we, so. I get home and Jonathan and I are talking I'm like, Jonathan, we're not going to get that yeah. file. You know, we're not going to get that yeah. file. And uh, I was using the restroom in our half bath <laughs> <laughs> and my phone went off and I was like, we got her we file. Got the file. Like how, so a family got her file. This was a Friday afternoon. Said no within an hour. Within an hour and a half. Ish. Yeah. 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 And then it was after five o'clock because there's a time difference between us and Colorado yeah. where our agency is stationed. And we got her file, and they said you had till Monday. Yeah, this was Friday. And it was Spark Weekend, and he worked. Now, Spark Weekend is a discipleship uh, weekend that our youth does. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people call it Disciple Now. It has many different yeah. names. And we usually, we like to open up our home to have a group, but he had to work. Had to work that weekend. And that, so, was, that was another challenge, was we're trying to figure out, is this our kid? And he was working, and Trying I to talk had to volunteered. Doctors. She had volunteered for Spark. I'd volunteered when I got off work. Um, anyways, we yeah, we had said yeah, we'll help you. And in the meantime, we had a file, and that's all my mind was consumed of. And I had to like drive kids around, and it was raining outside, and they were doing like a, a scavenger hunt. And like all I have on my brain is this file. And uh, the girl, the nurse that we talked to, um, that we talked to with the past two files we received and had turned down. She was sick, and so we could not yeah. meet with her at any point in time. She was sick. Yeah. She messaged. She looked at the file. She's like, you know, no huge concerns here for me. And uh, and then uh, you might can hear happy yeah. in the background. <laughs> and then her daughter-in-law is like the head of neurology at a major hospital. Children's hospital. Major children's major hospital. Major pediatric. Yeah. And uh, we could not get in touch with her. My emails yeah. were not, she didn't respond. There was a little something neurological in Hattie's file that made us want to consult with a physician first. Yeah. Uh, and we did that with all the files that we yeah. got. And, and that's what's recommended your yeah. because it, you're, you have things that are being translated from yeah. Chinese Mandarin to English. And they, call it, just, they call it Chinglish. Uh, is that really what they yeah, call it? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, that's true. Yeah. It's a, the, because some of the, the translation from Chinese to English, it doesn't always go yeah. smooth. And so, in, anyways. Yeah. yeah. And so, I remember having this, being consumed by it. He's consumed yeah. by it. We got to break away for a little bit and go get some dinner at Chipotle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and kind of talk about this file. And we couldn't get in, in touch with our people. Couldn't get in touch with the doctors. Couldn't get in touch with it. And, and all the time, the, the clock is ticking it's down. It's ticking. You've got to let us know by Monday morning. And um, mom was over here on Sunday. We were having Sunday lunch and I'm crying. And mom says, are you crying because you don't think she's y'all's? And I said, no, I'm crying because I think she is. Mm. And 
So we said yes. We said yes without having, hearing. Uh, without hearing. It was a huge, huge leap of faith huge. to say yes. I, I, and I told Molly, I was like, I feel like this is our daughter. This is, this is our daughter. And, but we couldn't confirm with the doctors. The doctors couldn't tell us what we needed to hear yeah. to comfort us. Well, to make sure. To make us feel calm about it. Well, to make us. To me, it was, is wanting, I want people to be responsible with who they say yes to because yeah. there is a sense of responsibility. But I did, we did hear back from um, the nurse and saying that she didn't see anything. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing where we're like, yeah. It was enough for, for me. I think God knew it was enough for me to say yes, and, and I still had to take that leap of faith. There were still some huge unanswered there questions. There were. And as soon as we said yes, as soon as we, we contacted our agency and said we want to do a letter of intent, as soon as it was done, we heard back from the head of neurology, and she's like, her file looks great. Yeah. I mean, it was she like, went are over you it me? Um, with the things that I didn't understand, and she explained those things to me. We're almost done. Almost done. And this girl, y'all. Look at her. See, so there, there is. <laughs> she is so goofy. <laughs> yeah. And we are so Can goofy. Um, if you, I'm sure a lot of people, if you lived with them in their house, um, she needs to shut the door. Oh, shut the and door. Make it official. Um, then you would know that sometimes people are just crazy in a home. Come sit with me. She is sassy. Oh, sassy. And I am sassy. She is bossy. And I am ah. bossy as I'll get out. That just hit my bum oh, bum. Oh, my goodness. I hit her bum bum. bum. Um, <sighs> Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, Mommy is sick and she and she can't spread jam like this. I know. I'm yeah. trying not to We're spread jam. trying not to spread jam. It's so hard. Cause and so... She's been sneezing and coughing and whatever. So, I hope she gets better. Thank you. Hey, what do you want to tell the people out there? Honey, do you live in America? Yeah. What yeah. state do you live in? American. 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 Yeah. Remember, you live in what, what town do you live in? Well, this town. I went to Texas um, today, and a long time ago, I used to be in China, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a far away. It is mm -hmm. far away. And you used to come pick me up. You came pick you mm -hmm. up. And you get, mm -hmm. and I flew on an airplane flew back to your home. Back to your home. And they yeah. said, yeah. <laughs> And it was a very long flight, was and you a very long would flight. not get off of my lap. You wanted to be on my lap the entire time. I did yeah. not get up one time in that 13, 14 hour flight. Do you remember I, that, I you remember that want, eight hour period where I stood up? And I didn't want to be in your lap, Dad. No, what you didn't. Mean, that eight hour period? Remember, so she could lay down? Oh, goodness. Yeah, the it was flight just was horrible. Horrible. And, and so, today I have a sticker. What's your favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is purple, and my favorite movie is. Uh, Tell them. Molly and the. Uh, Nolly. Oh, Molly, Molly and the Nolly. Yeah. I thought she was gonna say Melanie Molly. and Molly. <laughs> <sighs> What's your favorite? Who's your favorite YouTube channel? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and today. Everybody's fit. Yeah? Why are you keep hitting yourself <laughs> on the head? Are you nervous to be in front of camera? No. <laughs> Can you cross your eyes and show them your eye trick? Oh, it's me. I oh, well, don't hurt your eyes. That it hurts my... You did it, and I did this, and the light showed up in oh, my eyes. Oh, the light kind of yeah. hurt it? Yeah, when I did this. Oh, goodness. So, don't let me do... What do you want for Christmas? A teddy bear to sleep on? Here, you let's put this back here and you can talk to them. Um, what about, here, don't get too close, because that way they can hear you. Um, I, I like every color of the rainbow. I only love red and purple. You like every color of the rainbow. But you only like red, red and purple. purple. Okay. Yeah, and... And you want 
You told me that you wanted a Barbie dream house for Christmas. Yes, so Barbies can fit. So Barbies can fit. Yeah, because they need a home. Because they, they don't fit in your Peppa house, no. do they? Yes. Barbies don't fit in the Peppa house at all. Only Peppa. Okay, don't, so don't say it so we don't hurt their ears. So can I... Uh, Daddy, you don't do that when I'm in. Whoa. What? Transformer just blew. <laughs> the transformer just blew. There was a huge explosion outside. And oh, so... Yeah. But you know this is the second time for me to film without electricity? I don't know. What, how crazy I is gotta that? I got to go fire the gym. All right. Up. I'm scared. Yeah. Well, we're pretty much done here. Yeah. But, but honestly, more wood and then we can be done. Okay, well... In 15 minutes and 1,000 minutes, actually. In 15,000... Okay, can thousand. you tell... Can you tell... Um, can you tell our guests, can you say, please like and subscribe? Comment down below. I'll, I'll say it. You want me to say it? Yeah. And then I'm going to say some more words. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah. We're talking. Adoption rocks, by the way. It's it's an incredible, incredible experience. I if mean, you have any questions, let us know. We'll yeah. be happy to answer anything. And, and comment be, down below. Yeah. And comment down below. We will be happy to do a five or ten hour video <laughs> on our <laughs> no. ten or nine video. Yes. So thank you for joining us today. No, I got to do some more talking. Oh, okay, um, my, my bad. Um oh, sorry guys. Well guys this is not very good. Your hair is tickling me. So this is not very good without light, cause it bammed. Yeah, it, it bammed. It did bammed. What was that noise? That was a transformer. Do you remember when you told up. me that you were brain did? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, you said you had all your brain did. Remember you you were talking about how smart you were. You were like, yeah, I'm very brain did. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> I'm still kind of brain did. Yeah. I mean, I have lots of brain. So guys, um, can you not talk? I don't want you to talk right now, so you can talk after me, That's guys. Okay. I just really... <laughs> I just... <laughs> so, guys, this is a very funny <laughs> Let me laugh for a minute. Let you laugh for a minute? Give okay. me, give us privacy, okay, guys? We <laughs> <laughs> won't show it to everybody. No, we won't. We'll show it to everybody. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's pretend. Ready? Hi, I'm... Wait, I, I had to start. You, you look at me. Hi, I'm Melanie. And I'm Lonnie. Thank you for, for this day. Welcome to our channel. Today, today we want to talk about. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Hi, I'm Mel Hi, I'm Molly, and this is Melody. She's my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Honey. Just grab my collar. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi I'm Mel. Hi, I'm Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie. 